don't seem beholden to the usual Riddler visual tropes in this. So what, like, how did you kind of come? come yeah, he's he's my favorite Batman villain, and I've always thought he looks like a total dope. <laughs> <laughs> think I want money. What I want now is your audio. Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Nice to be back. Nice to be at Comic-Con. Nice Sorry. to not be dead. Yes. <laughs> it's very nice to yes. not be dead. We cannot say the same about some citizens of Gotham City, however, uh, after <laughs> after the events of, of Batman One Bad Day Riddler. Poor John Oates. Yeah. <laughs> so it's John Henry Oates, right? Yeah. So I spent this whole book like unpacking every name in the book, whether they were like scrambled or if they, because there's also Burt Weston, which which sounds like you know Burt Ward and Adam West. And but did you get the one actual scramble that's in the book? No. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> so I guess you didn't know. No, so I'm not good. The, not the, the title of the comic is. I mean, it's obviously got that real big colon title, but our, the title of our story. Our, the, the, the Killing Joke is the title of Alan's story. Our, our, our story, the title is Dreadful Rains. Okay. And that is a, that, that is something you can rearrange. Something. Dreadful Rains, okay. Yeah. I think just for, for the sake of our audience, like explain because this is not the only Batman One Bad Day special. You know, you're kicking off the event, correct? So why don't you just kind of give us an overview and talk about how this was brought to you to begin with, and then we will get into some of the, some of the deeper elements of the book. I mean, our assignment was super, it's one of those super clear, super easy pitches when we got the assignment. It was the idea that the killing joke was, you know, 35, 40 years ago. And that story, I mean, I remember reading it as an 11 year old and my older brother bought the copy because I wasn't allowed to read that. And I had to sneak into his room and, and that story scared, scared me. It was the first comic that ever scared me. And not only that, but it changed sort of how we saw Joker where he became this almost pillar of the DC universe, like, like, like it was Superman, Batman, and the Joker. There was like this horror thing that at the center of this universe that made every story scary. Uh, and they said, do you remember that time? I was like, yeah, yeah, that was that was really big. That was life changing, it's one of the greatest issues. It's one of the most uh, legacy issues of all time. Like, yeah, can you just do that again? Was basically it. <laughs> so, so that was it, can you do that again? Can you, now that the Riddler just got elevated in the Batman, Paul Dano's performance, now that that, that that character is in the conscience of America and the world, can you make a story just like after Jack Nicholson had the Joker? Can you do that story for the Riddler? Can you make him scary? Can you make him vital? Can you make him important? Um, can you make a comic book that an 11 year old today can steal from their four year old brother and, and think they've seen something on the edge of the world? And, and that's what we try to do. When, when you guys start like working on this story, and you know the Riddler has such a distinct visual identity, but here he is a little different, and like you don't seem beholden to the usual Riddler visual tropes in this. So what, like, how did you kind of come? come yeah, out he's of this? he's my favorite Batman villain, and I've always thought he looks like a total dope. <laughs> <laughs> I was never a fan of the huge mutton chops and the various ways he's been done, but the the. The versions of him that I have loved are the animated versions. And I think those are the, I mean, I feel like Batman the Animated Adventures was like the touchstone for our entire generation of Batman. I really liked, you know, the, the OG animated suit and bowler hat and the purple mask and stuff. But then in uh, was it, New Adventures of Batman, so it's like the fourth season. And then uh, subsequent things like uh, Justice League action and uh, Harley Quinn even, he's this way. Uh, it's the bald guy with the makeup. He's a little, he's not as like sexy as he is in the, in the modern comics. He's kind of this sallow, creepy looking cryptid guy. <laughs> and uh, so I kind of ran with that. And uh, because that always just struck me uh, watching those things. And so it was the perfect time to bring that in both thematically with what happens in the story and how he now views his role in, in Gotham and the world. And then also in that the, the tone of the book, I think lent itself to it more than, than kind of a goofy Batman 66 look. I love Batman 66 and I will, I'm not here for Batman 66 slander, but 
throughout the book, and this is something that Killing Joke did really well too. Like Killing Joke managed to embrace the breadth of Joker's history, like integrating his 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 weirdo Red Hood origin with something that fit that horrific tone. And you guys kind of do that here, and I feel like, uh, let me know if I'm imagining this, but there's even little nods to Batman 66. Like, why are there sharks in Gotham Harbor? Uh, yeah, very much so. But the, the problem you have facing the Riddler is the Joker's origin. It had that Red Hood part. It had the falling in the vat of acid. It has some coolness, some weight to it. The Riddler's origin story... Not as much. Uh, you know, he's had a few origin stories over the years. Like, I don't know, we all think of Jim Carrey with a mixer on his head. Um, or in, in, in the cartoon, um, he's he's a programmer that just is really bad at his job. And, uh, but in the actual comic books, in continuity, his origin, if you look it up in Wikipedia to this day, is uh, at some point he cheated on a test and then decided to become a Riddler. That is the worst origin story of any supervillain ever. And that hasn't been fixed in 70 years. We, we stuck with he cheated on a test and decided to become the Riddler. Uh, and, and so that's what we had to work with. He had to somehow take just that small fact of how does cheating on a test lead you to sort of change your life to make it about riddles and, 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 and putting this thing where every time you commit a crime, you want someone to catch you because the, the Riddler could get away with his crimes. That could be the easiest thing ever, but he always like, ha-ha, Batman. You know, he always Frank Gorshins it. He always leaves something behind, and then Batman finds him, and that's every single rid riddle, Riddler story. Why does that come from cheating on a test, and why in this does he finally evolve beyond that? I felt so bad for that teacher. He seems like such a good dude. <laughs> Like, he's just yeah, he's, like, what the hell? Like, you guys yeah. are brutal. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's just doing, he's doing, his, doing his best, and he encountered something real evil. <laughs> the book, it's a horror story. Like, this book is a horror story, I feel. But what's interesting to me is that visually, you don't take it quite as far into the, like, the overt visual horror that Killing Joke did. Yeah. What were you doing there? Like, it's very, it's it's a lot of implied horror and a yeah. lot of menace. To me, it's... When the guy gets his fingers cut off. I okay, remember. maybe yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Finally have a book I can show my four-year-old. Uh, but no, uh, I view it as a horror story for sure, but it's a horror story in the vein of, like, Silence of the Lambs is a horror story. Yeah. Um, it gets in your head, and especially as you get more towards the end and you figure out what his whole deal is and where he's coming from, uh, it's... It's that terrifying notion of a force or a problem that you cannot beat. Like, it's impossible. Like, I always think of, like, oh, if, you know, the whole thing of, like, if Superman were real but he was evil and you just couldn't do anything about it. Uh, it's almost the same thing with Riddler in this book. So I have to ask, because, again, keep coming back to that, that killing joke mission statement. And there's long been debate about... You know, how much of Killing Joke is truly in continuity? Obviously, elements of it continue to influence, like, you know, like canon, you know, and then there's elements of it that have always been deliberately left ambiguous, especially the final page. And this has a very ambiguous final page. So, like, seriously. yeah, <laughs> like, you were not messing around. And, like, you know, if you go by the answer of that riddle, you know, then we're kind of going back to Alan Moore's answer about, like, how the Killing Joke really ends. You know, so how do you view this and its place within actual DC continuity? So this is the same as the Killing Joke is in continuity, um, and, and the Killing Joke has reverberated. You know, with with all, of, um, you know, with Oracle coming out of that, one of the greatest DC comic characters. Um, even though it's horrible how it happened, it, it gave us that sort of that, that the sort of wonder of that era. Um, and yeah, this is this this is meant to be as impactful as that. This is meant to be a story that lives inside the DC universe. And um, just as many writers have made of the killing joke ending what they will, hopefully many writers, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of our medium. You know, we, we are uh, standing on the shoulder of giants and hopefully someone's gonna get up on our shoulders again. So when those people come, hopefully they, um, they do their thing with this story. Hopefully this inspires them to tell what happens next. But yeah, that final riddle is, is, is answered by the final panel where it just says at the end. Yeah, yeah. it's great. And Mitch, this is more of a comment than a question. All right. I just, I, I think genuinely one of my favorite images of Bruce Wayne in like comics history, just Bruce Wayne, not Batman, is there is a panel of him at the funeral for poor John Oates. Like, 
standing in the rain, just kind of looking at the camera. That one panel is some of your best work. Mm, thank you. Like, I agree with that. Yeah, I, that's, I, that scene's one of my favorites. Yeah, that whole scene is great. Like yeah. that whole sequence of pages, but there's just this one panel. I can't remember the last time an artist captured the spirit of Bruce Wayne and everything oh. that goes on in this guy. You know, not in like the, the grouchy, like, you know, my parents are dead and I'm prepared for everything kind of way, but just like, the pearl. yeah, like the real, like the real heart of this guy. So, well, thank you. Yeah. This is, this is really great work. I agree with that. I, that, that panel really hit me uh, when I finally got the first sort of with my letters on it. And I was like, oh, this, cause that's when it feels. When you hit that panel, you're like, oh, this isn't a comic book. This is like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm totally off. It's not a comic, but it's an HBO mini. Like, yeah. this is, this is, this isn't, I mean, no offense. I, I, I love, you know, network TV, but this is not Hawaii Five-0. This is the stuff you put on Sunday night at 9 o'clock, you know, when Game of Thrones comes on. Like, that, that's when that hit me in that one panel. You know? Well, you're the one. So, Tom and I always do this thing where I work in structured panels. I don't break them and kind of do that modern kind of comics thing I, I'm very much do panel by panel in boxes but that's because I like to control time and Tom does this wonderful thing where he writes it that way where so we see that first panel of Bruce and then the next panel on the next page is the exact same shot but it's later in the day he's more wet from the rain the other crowd is gone so Tom writes these beautiful moments like that where you can just like oh because of the way we do comics now, we know that he's been standing out there for God knows how long. Fellas, thank you so much. 